Oh, hey, sorry. It's posted on our Instagram page. Be sure to give us a follow. We're posting there all the time. Great content that you cannot find on YouTube or anywhere else. All right, let's get back to the video. Falls have and always will be one of the deadliest hazards in the construction industry, especially when working from heights. The thing about it is that they can be prevented using different types of protective measures and equipment. Personal fall arrest systems are a commonly used method to prevent fallen employees from striking the ground or another lower level if a fall were to occur. However, not one personal fall arrest system fits all. Before selecting and using any personal fall arrest system, we always make sure that we have the required fall clearance distance so that the employee does not strike the floor or any lower level should they fall. Hi, I'm Sergio with ANA Safety, and in this video, we will go over how to correctly calculate your required fall clearance distance, specifically for lanyards. So let's start by explaining what fall clearance is and why it's important. Fall clearance is the distance required to prevent workers from hitting the ground or lower level in case of a fall. It's crucial that we figure this out so we're not handing out or using the incorrect lanyards that will allow us to hit the ground if we fall. When it comes to calculating the required fall clearance distance, it is important that we measure from the anchor point to the ground or lower level. So if we have an overhead anchor point, the required fall clearance distance will be different than that of a foot tie off point, even if the working surface may be at the same height. Now that we understand where we measure from. Let's get the calculation we'll use to measure the required fall clearance distance for lanyards. First, we take the length of the lanyard itself. Add the deceleration distance, which will be your shock absorber once it fully deploys. Then we add the height of the worker. And finally, we add a safety factor of two to three feet. It is important that we understand the equipment that we're using and its specifications. The best way to know that is to go over and read the equipment's manuals and labels. Let's use a calculation in an example. Let's say a six foot tall employee is using a six foot lanyard lanyard with a deceleration device that is three and a half feet long when fully deployed. For this example, we'll add the length of the lanyard, which is six feet, the deceleration distance, which is three and a half feet, the height of the worker, which is six feet, and a safety factor of, let's say, three. Once we add all of these values, we can see that to use this system, the floor or next lower level must be at least 18 and a half feet below the anchor point. If the floor or next lower level is closer than 18 and a half feet, this system will not protect the worker in case of a fall. Let's go through another example. Now in this scenario, we have a worker who stands five feet, six inches and is using a four foot lanyard with a deceleration device that is three and a half feet when fully deployed. For this scenario, we'll add four feet for the length of the lanyard, five and a half feet for the height of the worker, three and a half feet for the deceleration device and a safety factor of three feet. Once all these values are added, we now know that a required fall clearance distance is 16 feet. So to use this system with this particular individual, the distance from the anchor point to the floor or next lower level must be at least 16 feet. All right, I hope to this point you're getting the hang of this and this is all starting to make sense to you. Now let's go over to calculate the required fall clearance distance when using a 12 foot extended free fall shock absorbing lanyard with a foot level tie off. Now in this scenario, we'll take into account the length of the shock absorbing lanyard, which will be six feet for this type of lanyard. The deceleration distance Distance, which will be five feet, then take into account the height of the worker. And let's use a six foot tall worker in this scenario as well. And finally, we'll add a safety factor of at least two feet to account for any other variables such as improperly adjusted harness, worker weight, etc. So after adding all these values, in this scenario, the next lower level or the floor must be at least 19 feet from the location of the anchor point to the one of the lower level. I hope this video and going over these different scenarios with the different lanyards have helped you with understanding how to calculate fall clearance distance and how not all personal fall arrest systems can be used in the same scenario. Before assigning or using your next personal fall arrest system, be sure to calculate your fall clearance distance to ensure that you or your coworker does not contact a lower level should a fall occur. Also, keep in mind that calculating fall clearance distance for shock absorbing lanyards is different than when calculating the distance for self retracting lanyards. Don't worry, a video on that will be coming out shortly and can be found on our YouTube channel. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoy the content and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos like this. Feel free to contact us using the information provided below if you have any questions or need assistance with your fall protection program or safety program as a whole. You can also follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.